Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you knew what I meant. <laughs> Dan Nelson here. Uh, if you've never seen me before, welcome to my almost daily uh, uh, broadcast, not quite, but uh, where I paint live in front of you, screw-ups and all. Let me tell you what I'm doing today. I am preparing for a class that I'm teaching, two classes actually, that I'm teaching this coming Thursday and Friday. This video is for Thursday's class. The name of Thursday's class is The Breakable Laws of Painting you've been following me for a while and you know very well that's the name of my book that I'm working very hard on and thank you for asking me if you can pre-order that book the answer is not yet it's not far enough along I, mean, I love the part that I've done so far but I've got a long ways to go so I'll let you know when it starts getting close enough to finish that you can actually not waste your money or <laughs> that's not the word I want to say that, that you, I don't want you to pay pre-order and then have to wait a year and a half you know for it to get fulfilled so I'll let you know uh, so the name of the class is the breakable laws of painting. Of course there are laws of painting. Yes, there are. People who say there are not, either they're lousy painters, that's why they don't know the laws, or if they're good painters, it's just a matter of semantics. Uh, anyway, you have to know the laws and then you can break them, but you have to know what they are first, otherwise you're probably just screwing up. Anyway, this painting is, uh, let me turn you around here real quick. Here's my, this is my reference. This is a, a painting I've already done before one time. There's a painting I did about a year ago of our fair city, downtown Raleigh, North Carolina, viewed from the north. So it's a very unusual. Raleigh skyline is somewhat famous from the south, the east, and the west, but this is from the north. And here's a half-baked photograph. I hope that I can go downtown and take a better one before my class on Thursday, but at the moment, that's the one I'm working from. You see, when I painted this class, when I painted this painting originally, I was, of course, painting on plein air. I was downtown looking at it, and uh, so I, I wasn't working from a photograph, but today I'm going to be working from a photograph, and I'm gonna t we're going to take this one step at a time, and step number one is going to be the the latest thing I'm doing with my paintings the latest development now as an artist I think a lot of our progress comes when we try something new but then when we try something new we don't really know if we're gonna stick with it or if it's a passing fad so I don't know if this is a something it's I'm gonna stick with or if it's a passing fad but here it is I'm going to make some big bold abstract marks on this on this bare canvas okay here we go just a little bit more now I'm going to describe a little bit what I'm doing here in just a minute that might be enough let me think I don't want to do too much yep that's good enough I'm going to call it quits okay I showed you a minute ago the subject matter let me show you again the the photographs that I'm working from I'm working from two reference one is a photograph of this scene and the other is a painting that I've already done of this scene there's the painting there's the half-baked photograph and here's how I'm starting the painting now I'm so intent about helping you figure out why I'm doing this that I'm prepared to actually write down four reasons for me starting a painting this way. Okay, why would I why would I start a painting this way? And this, I, let me see if I can remember these four reasons. One is I want to derail calling I want to derail my own and my students a tight drawing tendencies. Okay, so right from the get-go, I want to start off by making a big, hairy mess that knocks people because 98% of my students are people who say to me, I paint tight and I'd like to get loose. This is one way to do it. So number one, derail your tight drawing tendency. Number two is to get yourself, no, let me, let me make this number two, to uh, establish, I'm just going to abbreviate, establish the reality that interesting marks that interesting marks 
are the essence of good painting. Okay? So number one, I want to blow your tendency to get out your little bitty brush, your little bitty pencil, your little bitty charcoal, anything, and start going. Okay? Blow that out by doing this crazy mess. Number two, I want you to really get firmly in your mind. This is what I say, and I say it uh, with conviction. The essence of good painting is making interesting marks. So let's make the very first mark we make interesting. Number three, I want to uh, begin, I'm going to call it the mindset. I want to begin by helping to, to set, to cement in your mind the mindset of composition. Now, all four of these rules could be, could all, we could say about all of them, that they are against, they are combating, they are trying to destroy the tendency that most students have to draw, 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 draw. Tongue painting, tongue drawing. Uh, which leads to horrible, predictable, tight paintings. Instead, I want you to be thinking that, ooh, this painting is supposed to be a good composition. And finally, number four, why, why start with this big mess? Number four is because I want you to, I'm going to say, lay down, lay down some chaos. <laughs> I want you to lay down some visual chaos, dot, dot, to which you will respond later, so that you will have lots to respond to, lots to respond to in the later stages of the painting, okay? So that's four reasons why I start. Now just one more thing about this, this composition. Number one, it's an abstract painting, and if, if this is what I was known for, I would sign it and be done. Wouldn't that be fun? Someday, I'd love to, this would be my style. I could do a painting in about 40 seconds, sign it, and sell it for $10,000. That would really be fun. <laughs> but this is not what I'm known for, so that's probably not going to work. But I want you to notice that the step number one, I want it to be an attractive abstract painting. That's for my students. This is going to be the number one challenge for you, for a lot of you, for a lot of you, is to do this. And you notice I did it with a rag, not a brush. You could do it with a brush, but I really want it to be, now here's the word, kinesthetic. This is, if you go back and look at one of my videos on the categories of abstract painting, this is a major example of kinesthetic abstract painting, which means it has to do with the movement, the marks, the movement of the body to make. It works better if it's a bigger painting, but this will have to do. Okay, so it's a good composition, it's a kinesthetic abstract painting, and it does these four things. So that's why for the last several months I've been starting almost all my paintings this way. Uh, I'm going to stop right there and take a picture of this and I'll be back in a few minutes for step or layer number two. Thanks so much for watching.